thank you for joining today's Share the Wealth on ServiceNow's Application Portfolio Management. My name is Ashley Snyder, and today I'm presenting with Chris Yang. I'll begin the session with discussing what application portfolio management is, typical use cases, and some overall concepts of APM. Chris will be discussing the technical features of the application followed by a short demo. At the end of the session, there will be time for Q&A. What is application portfolio management? APM is an application found within ServiceNow's IT business management suite. It is also a framework that attempts to justify and measure the financial benefits of each application in comparison to maintenance and operational costs. APM is interconnected to many other areas of the platform, such as the CMDB, discovery, service mapping, software asset management, IT service management, and financial management. APM provides an application inventory and uses metrics to illustrate the benefits of each application. To summarize, at a high level, application portfolio management helps to gain a comprehensive understanding of the applications used in the organization so that stakeholders can identify redundancies and decrease budgetary costs. So why use APM? A significant portion of IT budget is spent on supporting, enhancing, and implementing new applications and supporting technologies. APM provides key capabilities to prioritize investments in the application portfolio based on data such as risk, value, and cost. By tracking and visualizing an application's alignment to a business capability, organizations can decide which application should be the standard for a particular business process, therefore creating a more optimized portfolio and reducing gaps within its needed business capabilities. Many times, tracking of applications can be spread across different repositories, such as SharePoint, ServiceNow, and even Excel spreadsheets. A comprehensive application inventory provides insight into the significance, usage, and capabilities an application supports all in one place. APM uses a number of features within the ServiceNow platform. At the core of building an application inventory is ServiceNow Discovery. Discovery finds applications and devices on an organization's network and then updates the CMDB with the information that it finds. Service mapping discovers all the application services in the organization and builds a comprehensive map of all devices, applications, and configuration profiles used in these application services. Software asset management uses the discovered CIs and creates an inventory of software models across the organization. And technology portfolio management uses the software asset management software inventory to gain insight into vendor life cycles for each technology and identify risks related to those models. APM and its application stack allow for the management of enterprise applications, business services, and the business capabilities they are used for. So who benefits from application portfolio management? In any organization, there are four main stakeholders that benefit from application portfolio management. IT leadership needs a comprehensive overview of application investments to justify technical debt and for application rationalization purposes. Enterprise architects take an organization's business strategy and define IT systems architecture to support the strategy. APM is designed to provide easy-to-use tools and processes for the enterprise architects to ensure their organization's technology objectives are aligned to its business goals. APM helps IT operations understand the number of high incident counts or outages impacting an application and utilizes infrastructure mapping to pinpoint the underlying technologies affected to restore service quickly. Application owners communicate business value and health of their applications and are responsible for prioritizing application maintenance, upgrade costs, and potential application-based costing. So there are some primary use cases of application portfolio management. The first one is the most common use case that we're going to see is the creation of an application inventory. Applications are loaded into the CMDB via discovery, or it could be third-party tools as well. Service mapping creates an infrastructure map of applications and their underlying technologies. 
Applications are then categorized based on purpose and function to assist with decisions related to rationalization or consolidation. Data certification feature allows certification tasks to be assigned to application owners for them to certify and maintain an application's data. After an organization has an application inventory, it may move on to the next common use case, which is capability-based planning. Application indicators are used to measure the usability, cost, quality, performance, and risk of applications. Assessments help stakeholders make strategic decisions on whether to replace or upgrade applications. Business capabilities are defined and mapped to establish a CI relationship between the capability and the application. Enterprise architects assess business capabilities in order to make decisions on how to strengthen business processes. The third common use case, as an organization matures through its rationalization of applications, and embraces software asset management, it can then use technology portfolio management. TPM provides insight into the number of software models linked to a business application and their associated risk, life cycles, and support contracts. Now that I've discussed what application portfolio management is, the technologies that it uses, and some primary use cases, I'd like to discuss an important concept in APM. The rationalization process is the core of application portfolio management. By utilizing the rationalization process, an organization can take control of their application landscape. There are five stages an organization will complete within the rationalization process. The first stage is identify. This is the stage where tools such as discovery, service mapping, or integrations are used to create an inventory of applications and its underlying technologies. The second stage is measure. Once an inventory has been created, metrics such as cost, quality, risk, and user satisfaction are used to understand the current state of each application. The third stage is evaluate. Now that the current state of the portfolio has been established, it's now time to craft what a future state of the portfolio should look like. Considerations such as strategic value, functional fit, and risk are used to define the future state of the portfolio. The fourth stage is decide. This stage begins transforming the current state of the portfolio into the future state. Upon completion of this stage, leadership will be able to recommend actions to take for each application, such as replacement, consolidation, upgrade, modernization, or retirement. The fifth stage is take action. Utilizing the recommendations from the decide stage, an organization can use project portfolio management to make final decisions regarding which projects to fund and produce a roadmap of projects taking into consideration demand and supply of resources. I hope I've helped to outline the main benefits, use cases, and key concepts of application portfolio management. Now I'll pass the presentation on to Chris, who will be discussing the technical aspects of APM and providing a brief demo. Thank you, Ashley, for handing over. Everyone should see the activating APM slide. So like any other application in ServiceNow, or many of the applications in ServiceNow, it doesn't come with the base install system. You need to get activated with the plugin. So we have the application portfolio management base plugin. Along with it, it comes with a bunch of dependencies, business planner, demand core, physical calendar, bubble chart widget for SP, tree map, and performance analytics for APM. So these dependencies will automatically be installed when the base plugin is installed. And there are some additional feature plugins that you can choose to enable. They're, they're optional to enable. The one that I highlighted in bold, Performance Analytics Premium for APM, is recommended since that will give you the ability to retrieve APM historical data that are greater than six months. The performance analytics that comes as a dependency only gives you six months of data. PPM standard, if you want to integrate APM with PPM and financial management for APM, if you want to integrate with the financial management application. So with the APM, it comes with four roles that are installed. And I want to kind of map this to what Ashley mentioned with the different stakeholders within the organization that may need to use these roles. The first one is APM user. He's able to create and update application records, and this is typically assigned to application managers. They're the owners of their applications, and they typically need to update application information with an APM. Next, we have the APM admins. They can do everything that APM user can do and administrative activities. 
And this is typically assigned to the enterprise architect. Administrative activities will include, for example, application categories, application families, indicator scores. These are all attributes that you can assign to an application. APM analyst. So it has everything that the APM admin and APM user can do with additional access to strategic dashboards and business goals. And this is typically assigned to a business analyst or the uh, business executive. And lastly, the APM read only role. And this is just to be assigned to anybody who may need to view only APM data. So next, I want to talk a little bit more about the APM terminology and the hierarchy within the application, APM application here. So we start at the top with the business capability. So this is a high level function of a business line. For example, we want to manage human resources. So that's a business capability and we can have a parent child relationship to create a hierarchy of business capabilities in which I will demo later. Next, we have business applications, and this is on the CMDB CI business app table. And this is different from the CMDB CI Apple table, which is mainly used for discovery. So this new table that comes with APM has many different attributes, such as application category, application family, business process that you can define for each application. So we can have a granular categorizations for, for the overview of applications here. Next, we have a new concept of application service. So this is an instance of the business application. For example, a business application could be called online sales and application service would be online sales dev instance or online sale QA instance or online sales in North America, South America, et cetera. So there are different instances of the business application and we need this differentiation to for the underlying supporting technologies for each one because they may be different. Next, we have the information objects. These log data that are being captured within each application, they can be related to either the application or the database catalog. For example, credit card information, customer date of birth, copyright protected music. And this is useful when an application is compromised there seems to be a security breach in certain application and you can see exactly what type of information is stored within that application. And lastly, we have the underlying configuration items, CMDB and the technology hardware and software models. So this ties into the technology portfolio management, which I will demo in a bit as well. These support the application services and stores information objects. So the life cycle will be displayed in the technology portfolio. So there are four main entry points into APM. The APM portal is the most important one in which you can access the other three from. Application landscape dashboard, capability mapping, and the technology portfolio management. So we start with the APM portal. So application portfolio management portal gives you an enterprise-wide application landscape view of the number of applications and other key metrics. The APM analyst role is required to view the portal. So we have business portfolio, information portfolio, application portfolio, and the technology portfolio. On the bottom there, there are opportunities and solutions, notifications, and recent activities. So we'll be mainly focusing on the four portfolios mentioned. So the application landscape dashboard is an overview of all the applications used here in enterprise. The dashboard provides pre-configured reports on applications, group by categories, install type, application type, business process, and business unit. The APM user role is required to view this dashboard. So those are your typically your application owners. So there are four reports are showing here, the top 10 application use, applications grouped by various attributes, category versus manufacturer, and the category versus the age. Next, we have the capability mapping, and this can be accessed from the APM portal as well. So this capability mapping is a page that shows an overview of all the business capabilities and the hierarchy in a graphical format. Each capability has a score showing the current state of the capability and also the supporting business applications for that capability. So we can easily manage all the capabilities from this page by either adding new ones or remove existing ones or reordering them in a way that makes sense for the organization. And then we have the technology portfolio management. So technology is a specific piece of a hardware or software model that's deployed to create a business application. This portfolio tracks 
all these hardware and software models. It shows the life cycle of the hardware models, shows the, all the near end of life applications, all the near end of contract applications, and all the already out of date applications. And this is useful to see which hardware or software model needs to be either replaced, retired, should be updated or invested in. So this, this will tie back to the business capability page when we see the risks for each business capability. So next I will go into the demo here. We'll start with the APM portal. As we can see here, the first thing we see is the business portfolio and we click into the hierarchy map. We can see all the business capabilities that came with the out of the box data. For example, we can see develop, manage human capital. There are 22 sub business capabilities that are supporting this main business capability. If you click on this business capability, you can see the capability score of 4.8. In the business application tab, you can see the underlying application that are supporting this business capability. And these are color coded. 4.8 is I think a okay score, but once it gets too low, it will become red. So if we click into the application itself, so this is the business application page within the platform view. As you can see, there are a lot more attributes for the business application record than the CMDBCI Apple table. Towards the bottom here, you can see all the CI scores associated with the application per fiscal period, which I will get into more details. So next. If you click on the business planning link, it'll show you all the strategies, the goals, capabilities, and business units that are currently in the instance. Next, we have the information portfolio. So these hold all the information objects in the system here. You can sort by any of these columns and like the platform view, you can right click and do show matching or filter out on any of the column values. For example, we have the card number, which is highly sensitive owned by Garfield and the sales business unit and the data domain is payment card information. So when you click into it, it'll, it'll show you basically the record view in the portal. Next, we have the application portfolio. I want to show you the landscape dashboard first. So this is the application landscape dashboard. Here is an overview of all the applications in APM. And these reports are useful because you can group by one attribute and stack by another. For example, the applications we can group by install type and stack by platform. And if you're only interested in certain category on the right-hand side, there's a list of filters that you can filter by. For example, we want to see all the finance applications. But the dashboard will update to only show the finance applications. So the application link will take you to basically a table view of all the applications in APM. And when you click into, when you click into one, this is the record view in the portal. And then you can see the CI scores at the bottom here. So these are application scores that are being calculated per fiscal period. And these are being generated from the indicators here. So if I go into the platform view, we can go into the application indicators. You can define your own, and these are just the ones that came out of the box. For example, we have the CSAT that are being calculated on a quarterly basis from an assessment that goes out to other users. And a combination of all these indicators will make up the uh, application score, and that's done in the scoring profile. So the default application profile, you can see CSAT is being used with a weight of 10. So if you have a new indicator, that you want to give it more weight, perhaps that's more useful in your organization. You can add it here and then give it a higher, higher weight. And same with the capability score, which I demo earlier, that's done in the capability indicators. So we have three here, but in the scoring profile, we have the business capability scoring profile. Each one is weighted equally. So a third for each. So that's how the business capability score is calculated. If you're going to the analyze link here, this is a pretty cool feature within APM. Here you can filter by all these attributes, application score, incident count, application incident count, business value score, CSAT score, et cetera. And you can select the fiscal period for that application. 
So this is where the real value of APM comes in, where you can see in a graphical format of which application to invest and which application to retire. For example, if we go into HCM, and this is one of the dependent plugins that we saw, the bubble chart one. Here you can see we're plotting uh, all the HCM applications uh, with functional score on the, on the X and then the business value or on the Y here. So you can see Workday, it has high functional score and high business value score. Persimmon and Temp Tracker as well. So they're all in the green, but, but we have one application, the attendance and payroll management system is low functional and low business value. And the recommended action by ServiceNow is to replace our application here. So this gives you an executive, a quick way to assess which application should be retired, which application should be invested in. And then the technology portfolio. So this shows you all the underlying technologies that are supporting business capabilities here. So we have, we're currently only filtering by high risk and we can show all risks. And then we have 84 applications here, but we'll keep it as high risk. We can add additional filters. We can choose either to show quarterly or monthly. This button here, uh, you can toggle between all instances of the application service or only the production instance. So we'll leave it as the production only. And then this will show you what all the life cycle data sources or hide them. So here, high risk, we have Avi Employee Engagement System, Bob J, Bomb Tracker, and Buy It. And you can see it on the risk column here, they're all red. And when you expand them, you can see exactly why. And it's because the Oracle DB server, 11G R2 standard is high risk. And that is because the life cycle that we defined from the publisher. And in 2017, February 5th, that's when the vendor stopped supporting this application. So this is flagged as high risk. The life cycle can either be defined from the publisher or your internal organization's own life cycle. For example, it may be a policy for the organization to always stay one release behind just for the vendor to flush out all the kinks in a new release. Let me go back to the business capability, the business portfolio, just for a bit here. So the business capability can also see the technology risk here by flipping this drop down to technology risk. And for this example, I'm gonna show manage information systems here. We have three high risk and the business application is, we have ServiceNow Discovery and SecOps. So it looks like these are all okay. Let's see. Let's go into the manage human capital one here. So when you click on the risk profile, it will take you to the technology portfolio management page. So this one's not assessed. I'm trying to find out where the, the risk is coming from here. Okay, so for the develop and manage IT customer relationship, under the business application, we can see the Bob J has a high risk and a risk profile. And if you click on here, it'll take you to the technology portfolio management page. And then you can see why exactly Bob J is a high risk application here. So yeah, that's an overview of APM. I will leave a little bit of time for questions and Ashley and I will try to answer them to the best of our capabilities. Yeah, thank you, Chris. I just want to let everyone know, too, a lot of good content is on Now Learning. If you want to learn more about application portfolio management, there's two courses. And also, we're going to be doing an on-air um, application portfolio management, mainly focused on, like, trimming excess applications and such. And that will be happening in November. So if you're interested in more, keep an eye out for that. But now I'll go ahead and open the floor for any q and I have a question. So just to be clear... In order to use or to leverage application portfolio management, you do need to have discovery and service mapping today. You don't, just like anything CMDB related in ServiceNow, I mean, you can use third party plugins and tools like SACM or other integrations, but discovery and service mapping is gonna make it so much easier. I've come from an organization that actually 
tried to write scripts and do manual stuff for service mapping. Sure. Um, it's just very resource intensive. Well, so like anything, you don't have to have it, but it is highly suggested and would make the process a lot easier. Yeah, and just add on to that, there are a bunch of ServiceNow products that would enhance application portfolio management. For example, SAM Pro will give you all the software models that are going to be supporting all the applications. As mentioned, service mapping, tie them to the, the application and then eventually the business capability. Does anyone else have any other questions? Yeah, I'll throw one out there for you. Could you briefly address how APM falls into the common service data model? Yeah, it's kind of like what Chris went over. So we have a new application table and Chris, you might know more about this than me, but I know we have the business application table like you demoed. That's one table that you're going to start seeing with the new common services data model. Another one was the information objects. That's also new with the common services data model. Chris, can yeah. you kind of speak to and how that like works with the application services? Yeah, definitely. So APM is built with a common services data model in mind and all the hierarchy and relationships are following the CSDM standards. So as I actually mentioned, you know, we have the application, this application at the top there, and that's a new table introduced within APM. I believe that's also in the CSDM as well. And then we have application services underneath it and then information objects, which can be tied to the application and also the underlying supporting configuration items that are going to be tied to the application as well. If there are no other questions, I think we're ready to wrap this up. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you guys. All right. Thank you everyone.